it's funny you said that because you know sometimes when I put myself out there, I'm like, man, why can't I live a normal life? Normal, yeah. <laughs> normal, normal life means that normal life means that nobody, I don't do too much. yeah, nobody's peeping into your life. But I gotta be out there. Like, it is what it is. Hi everyone, this is Mitch of All Trades. Yep, and we are in a new setting, and that's because I have a very special guest here. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. Well, my name is Dr. Nemekaweke, also known as Dr. Oyememe, also known as Dancing Doctor. Yeah. Ching! <laughs> um, I am uh, uh, going into physical medicine rehabilitation. I'm, I just recently matched into you know residency. We'll be doing my um, first year at Staten Island University Hospital hey. for internal medicine. It's a big deal, y'all. A big deal. Then I'm going off to back to Texas, Houston, Texas, at Baylor College of Medicine, where I'll be undergoing three years of physical medicine rehabilitation residency. I wanted to do this video with you because um, for some of you that are watching, you probably follow or even watch him. He mm -hmm. had you have a very um, p big platform that you've been building for a while, mm -hmm. and in that platform, you've expressed a lot about yourself. Yes. So one thing that I want to talk about is more so how you are pursuing you know medicine your field mm -hmm. but you're still making room for the other creative things that you do okay you know just as a as a kid you know i've always been very active you know um and you know i want i think i think i dream a lot you know i'm you know it started off a dreamy state you know, of mind um i'm a huge passionate guy in in, in everything i do and for me, early on was athletics. I used to, you know, play sports, you know, had the dreams to be like Michael Jordan, you know, and then discover football, you know, then I was like, man, I want to hit hard like Roy Williams, you know, for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, overall, these are things that, so I, I started to identify individuals who were doing things that, you know, you know, drove my passion. Um, for me, it was more like knowing that, you know, as a journey, I'm going to discover something. So I always had an open mind. Um, I knew I was on a journey early on. I didn't quite know that some of the things that I'm doing now will be something I'm actually going I was going to be doing. A lot of these discoveries came about. I never said to me when I was younger, oh, I want to be a dancer. Or oh, I never said, oh, I want to be a writer. Or oh, I never said I want to be a singer. Or oh, I never said I want to do all of these things. But one thing about me is that I believe you can do whatever you put your mind to. That's good. That's what I want to preach. Um, and, 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 and in believing so, I've, you know, and in believing so, I've, uh, you know, kind of journeyed and took these steps into these areas that present with fear at first. Mm. You know, when I started to dance, for example, you know, a huge component of, my, of, my, of our culture um, as you know, we are Igbos and things like that. He's component of our culture is our cultural display. And one of the things that I used to see at Enugu State conventions and, you know, parties was people come out and dance. I knew I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was happening inside of my spirit, but physically I was too shy. I didn't have the, you know, you know, the skills at the time to do it. So everything I'm able to do now, it comes from the inside. Right, I used to be in choir back in the day. I remember when I asked somebody to come out and sing a solo. It was Joyful, Joyful by Sister Act. There was a part of the solo that I tried out for. I just knew, I just always felt like I was good at things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, I took a step of faith um, and I practiced my voice and I was good enough to get that solo. Mm -hmm. um, and it just goes with everything. When I practice, put effort into something, it becomes something I, I can do. When I tapped into my ability to write, um, I, I, and also another thing that came in with my ability to write was back in the day, I used to write like notes to, to, to girls and pass it around and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And you were very poetic. Yeah. So exactly. So my thing was, that was the only way I could communicate. I'll, I'll talk to you in, in, in parables. You know, I used to be afraid. I used to be shy. I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. But once I started to be able to express myself, mm -hmm. write in my deep space and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then I start coming out being confident with it. Now I'm like, you know what? I think my art will sell mm -hmm. like every artist 
you know, has to believe in himself. When Picasso did his art, mm -hmm. did you really do you really think that that would be that legendary? Like, if you look at how abstract it is, it's really nothing, mm -hmm. right? If you just want to be a simple minded person, yeah. you like it's really nothing, uh -huh. but nothing is simple, you know. So, that's my philosophy. And so, overall, um, like I said, I don't have a fine, um, you know, en engraved. I need to do this, mm -hmm. but these things are starting to build up, build up on its own as I as I journey. So and that's where a lot of these things comes out from. Oh, that's good. So you feel like, so it, it kind of sounds like you know when you're discovering these things, you're kind of discovering more about yourself. Absolutely, process. absolutely. I'm never afraid. You know, like even with the music thing, it happened last year. I've never. It wasn't like in high school. I want to make, make music, mm -hmm. but I knew I had rhythm. I knew I could coordinate these things. Mm -hmm. I knew there was, there was a structure to it. Mm -hmm. I knew it wouldn't be too difficult. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. Being an artist and stuff like that is a lot of challenges. You know, um, I, I don't have the greatest voice, but you know, you can learn how to record. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of and things is that make it work. Mm -hmm. They do certain things as long as you're confident. Mm -hmm. You know, it will sound good and. Um, so that's what has got me to the point of like really tapping into the music thing. And I think for me now, because I've tapped into it, I want to do like the Oliver Deco stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to leave a trademark, you mm -hmm. know, in the cultural imprint. Mm -hmm. I want myself to be somebody like, okay, in medicine, you know, this guy, you know, you know, came from Nigeria, won a lottery visa, grew up mm -hmm. in, you know, in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. have friends who... Mm -hmm. You know, you could easily slip off the off the grid with them and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah. I want to embody somebody to to tell you that regardless if you go into a professional route, um, your ambitions can still be practiced. You can still do that. You're not limited. I used to feel like once I commit myself to this, mm -hmm. then all doors are closed. They're not. Mm -hmm. You have the ability. It's a mindset. You have to really have to. He has a mindset check. If you want to get out of if you want to get out of work. You know, of, of course, it's going to be tough. And you say, I want to go to the studio. You prioritize. You want to go to the studio. Mm -hmm. But don't go into the studio for two hours. Go in the studio with something that's already prepped. You go in the yeah. studio, pop in quick 30 minutes, have com have good communication skill with the engineer or the person mm -hmm. that's going to be there and say, hey, I want to pop in and lay a verse. Mm -hmm. Then you let them do the work after you lay the verse. You mm -hmm. lay a verse 30 minutes. is like your mental exercise. Boom. Go home, see your family. Eat. Work on your notes within that room but you have to you have to you have to kind of like this I'm, as, I, as i'm verbalizing this now this is how i'm kind of structuring in my mind mm -hmm. so here's now where it gets better mm -hmm. if this is a passion of yours you bring that to your house get all the equipment you know what i'm saying take one saturday to set up your studio mm -hmm. you can still be a professional but it may you may not you may not record every day but there's gonna be time you may be off mm -hmm. and when you're off you can spend one or two it just depends if you're that passionate you mm -hmm. can make it work yeah um but it can be overwhelming it does overwhelm me um but I do pray for capacity to do it to do it do you find it very fulfilling that you're able to do all these things at once Yo. because even as you're saying it yeah. it does sound like it sounds like it takes up all of your days. It seems like it takes up a lot, of time, but I do have. I, there's a lot of time that I that I that waste have? doing nothing. Okay. So what it makes me do is realize I have something to do. Like right now, they, some days that I'm not doing anything, I could have finished my book. Mm -hmm. Like we have so much time. But it's easy for us to just. It's use easy. All of it. Exactly. We have so much, bro. Like even when people say 24 hours, you have so unless you unless you you know what I'm saying unless you're confined to. Um, a place of work mm -hmm. that you can't really do stuff like mm -hmm. all you could do then that's what limits your scope of work but when you at your when you were at home mm -hmm. the time that you laying down in bed or something like that you could be writing something mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. the time that you're you know brushing your teeth in the morning you could be humming you know what i'm saying you could be humming the the, the music or whatever mm -hmm. just get into your mind like you could be driving Playing an instrumental that you want to record something to, you may have not recorded, but that's your time in the morning. That's your goal. Mm -hmm. Some people have a goal of finishing a book. So what do they do? They can't read it at home. Mm -hmm. They get the audio version as yeah. they're driving. They kill multiple birds, and you know. So exactly. So if you're wasting time, when you start realizing that you're a goal getter, mm -hmm. anytime you have time to feed your mind towards that goal, you do it. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Go ahead. Um, so in this society, like a lot of things are handed to us. A lot of things are digital. A lot of things are like at our doorstep. Um, I would say we kind of live in a lazy generation kind of mindset. So how how have you been able to break out of that 
if you have break out of that mindset to even do the things you know that you actually want to do because i feel like a lot of us we do have these inner passions Mm -hmm. and um most of the people that are watching most of you guys are in school either um college or graduate school so we we still have a lot of things on our plate but how how have you been able to navigate you know the responsibilities of your life Mm. while still trying to fit in your passion okay i'm gonna just give analogies like this right you know you go to a thanksgiving you know celebration you Mm -hmm. go to the you go visit to my house whether it's your house all the food is ready right Mm -hmm. you get a plate Mm -hmm. right typically the first time you go you've eyed a couple of things that you want Mm -hmm. right you're not going to overload your plate with too much turkey. Then you're not going to be able to fit the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So you want to get everything portioned to satisfy yourself. Yeah. Right? The truth is you can't do everything. So you can't eat everything you want. But you're going to have to get the... You have to be honest with yourself and get the portions that you want. And dedicate your energy in those in those portions. In those really right? So, 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 so that's what is called making an assessment. Mm. Right? That's just like in medicine. You make an assessment and then you come up with a plan. Mm-hmm. First, you have to assess to yourself what is it that you want, and when you make an assessment, you you now coordinate. It's called coordinating. Mm-hmm. Now the plan is how do you get to that goal? So now the question is once you've gathered once you've gathered the food, now you've made an assessment. Mm-hmm. It's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Now the question is how am I going to attack this meal? Do I go to the rice first? Do I go to the uh, macaroni and cheese first, or do I start at the, 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 the turkey? Mm-hmm. Right, depending on which depending on what the one you you start with. Might drive your stomach to satisfaction. You might not finish that plate. Mm. You understand? So you might start eating turkey first. It's probably tougher to digest. Mm-hmm. So your stomach is going to get is going to reach satiety mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. You understand? And before you, so I'm just using all this to say is that when you're overloaded with many things that you want to do, mm-hmm. right? You have to make a good plan. Mm-hmm. You have to see which one which which one is going to need your need your willpower right now mm-hmm. to go do it because your willpower is only very you only have small amount of willpower. Within the throughout your day, right? You're not gonna have 100% willpower for 24 hours. It's impossible. Willpower is only gonna be a section in your day, and you need to do. You need to utilize your willpower effectively. And willpower is what gets you to having a good habit, right? So once things become habitual, with what you be able to get your willpower enforced with, right, or enforced by, right, you start developing these habits. Now you take the habits that you've created. For the thing that you focus your willpower on, right, and put the habit into the next thing you want to do, it makes everything come come together. Mm. But you have to be, you have to make a proper assessment mm. and a proper plan. Mm. You can't dibble and dabble in every single thing. Mm. I haven't done that. I haven't tried to. In the course of getting my medical degree, I didn't do these other things. Mm. It's impossible to try to make music. Mm. I've only been able to dive into that within my two years of not getting into residency. Mm-hmm. And that has allowed me to tap into that, mm-hmm. right? Now, me going into residency, I know that the honest truth is I can't go in there trying to make an album out of residency. But I will never tell you that it's impossible. Mm-hmm. But if I've developed a good habit, mm-hmm. I can. Mm-hmm. I could come out of four years and say, I'm finishing my residency with an album. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and, 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 and to me as a physician with the time I have, yeah. that's probably going to be applauded. That's probably going to be applauded more than somebody who's just a, a, a 24-hour artists who are mm-hmm. expected to have this yeah. hence why my rate in this production it doesn't have to move like somebody who's just a complete artist mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i'm developing my own lane mm-hmm. my own comfort mm-hmm. with the time that i have and mm-hmm. stuff like that and the but, habits that you've acquired from school mm-hmm. you're able to apply that to what you uh, exactly whatever it is that you venture into. facts that's, you know that's deep and just to just to state some more like being a medical school has taught me a lot about time management and time management has is what has allowed me to be able to um you know manifest some of these things um and also most importantly god has been has been a huge component um to this whole thing yeah wow Mm -hmm. um what advice would you give anyone that's like they're they're in this season where let's say they're waiting because like you said you had a two two year wait so you got into residency Mm -hmm. and Let's say there's somebody here that's waiting, you know, yeah. either waiting to get into school, waiting mm-hmm. for a response. Like, how would they, you know, tackle through that and still come out flourishing or productive in, you know, their wait period? Most important thing when you're waiting is that you want to be in joy. You understand? You don't want your waiting period to cause depression. 
Because mm. you're so focused on the thing that's, that you're waiting for. Mm. Right? Oftentimes, we sit there waiting for the bus to come. Right? You wait for the bus to come. Right? You got to ask yourself, is it, is it ideal to wait for the bus to come here? Or is it more ideal to, to, to try to time where the bus is going to meet next? Mm. And cover the ground as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Right? So now you have to tell yourself, while I'm waiting, let me cover as much ground as I can in my life, in other areas. At the same time, keeping a mind of where I'm trying to go. And as you cover ground, it's giving you joy. You, you're, you're, you're moving forward in some way in your life until that ball starts rolling. But if you sit there and wait, right, you might wait forever and you might become dull, right? When, you, when, 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 when a knife is not being used, it becomes dull. When the knife is out, still oxygen, you know, things like that will start to decay it and rust in and stuff like that. It becomes rusty. So you don't want on your waiting period to be rusty. You want to start doing something. For example, when I didn't get to medical school at first, I was doing certain things. I knew I wanted to do philanthropy. I knew I liked to give. I knew I liked to be involved in my culture and stuff like that in my community. So I was still doing community service. I even went a step ahead and did something that was uncom- and was not uncommon to me. I I I competed for for a pageant. There was a Mr. Mr. Face and Mr. and Mrs. Face of Africa wow. USA that was going on in, in Dallas, Texas at the time, 2013. So I said I went to the platform to push the things that I like to do, which was my culture and you know, taking, you know, giving back to Nigeria and you know all these things that I was doing. I'll put that on a platform. And on top of that, I'm a competitor. So it allowed me to compete. I got out of my comfort zone, challenged myself. So hopefully that I can win in something in my life. Because mm-hmm. to me, it felt like I was taking losses mm. because I wasn't doing well. Mm. So I was like, let me win somewhere. Right? You know, you can't keep playing the same person one-on-one basketball and keep and keep losing. Like, you know, you want to eventually beat them. But what you need to do is take a step back sometimes. Go play some games at a lower division. Build your morale up. Sharpen then the knife. Sharpen the knife again and come back. So yeah. that's what I, that's my best advice. You know, if you're waiting for something, pick up something new. Pick up something that you 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 put on the side and keep work on that. Life yeah. doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Don't stop because somebody's holding. You no, know, just keep going. That's my own. That's that's my honest. You know, um, information I can share that's, regarding that, that. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is, um, some well, I know personally. Whenever I'm waiting for something, yeah, that's that's usually when my mind starts to like attack me. I start to feel doubt and mm, all that stuff. Yeah, and it is important to keep you know to keep sharpening your skills yeah. or whatever it is that you want to yeah. do. But how how what how have you navigated like? You know, pursuing these other things yeah. and still believing that, you know, you would still get into med school. Yeah. Anyway. Which, you know, at the, I'll tell you something, you know, um, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is always there, but sometimes it can be very, very small. Mm. You know, and that's the biggest fear because all you see is darkness yeah. and a little spot of light. And you don't know how long you're going to go till it start getting bigger. Mm. And sometimes you might be going, it just seems like it's not changing. Yeah. So he's like, you don't have any sense of direction. Mm-hmm. And this moment is scary. A lot of people will lose faith. People will become depressed. It's true. And if you do, it's all it's all normal. It's not abnormal. It seems abnormal, but it's normal, right? But we don't want to normalize that normality in that period. We want to make sure that we that we become joyful. And this is when I knew that if I'm going to be successful, everything's going to depend on God. My dad used to say, pray like it all depends on God. And study as, study as it all depends on you. And that stands true because you work hand in hand, right? It's all about faith over fear. Mm. And that's what I believe, you know, trusting God in the process, you know, no, regardless of fact. And I, 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 I dedicate myself to the word. You hear stories like, the, you know, Job's story when he lost everything. He said, he said, he said, God, you're the one that gave me this. So at the end of the day, you're the one that take it, right? So regardless of the fact, he didn't say, oh, my positions, all of these things, I'm going to lose. He still kept his faith in God. Another story was when Jacob was, you know, wrestling with the angel. And, and, and at night, wrestling with God, he wrestled with the angel till daybreak. Even when the angel is dislocated his hip, he was that hungry, you understand, that he said, I'm not going to let go till you bless me. See, these are things that fortify me. And I'm like, if these individuals can really be this committed, you understand, why can't I be? Mm. So it took me to the edge. Like, I had to write this down. Like, I, if I, I'm not here today. Because it was my willpower. Mm-hmm. Like I said, willpower is only a substantial amount throughout the day. 
It's not that much. Yo, you could die. You could, you could lose faith because of you know you exert a lot of willpower and it's like oh nothing's working. You lose faith, but your faith have to be so strong that when you run out of your abilities, that's all you're relying on your the faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what kept me confident through the periods where people were telling me go try something else. Mm -hmm. You know, even other people start to feel empathy for you mm -hmm. or start feeling like, oh my goodness, like you're still stuck here. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Like, no, no one's going to be feel, you know, don't feel sorry. Don't feel sorry about your situation. Just stay, say, God, is God. I trust God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? God's going to do it. And I held on for, for the longest, kept listening, kept fighting, kept trying till the doors open. And when the doors finally open and you know it's with you and God, the kind of the kind of joy you're gonna have, the kind of yeah. crazy ex explosion that's gonna happen in your mind. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. is is for you like that volcanic eruption in your mind will <laughs> stay with you. Yeah, forever. That'll that, be your story. What? What? Oh, that would be your story. I've I've um some of you guys probably know like even for me when I was in nursing school there was a moment where. Um, I used to exert a lot of willpower. I always thought that, you know, because mm. I always had the brain. I was like, yeah. no, I got this, I got this. Yeah. And there came to a point where everything I was doing was just not working. Like, I yeah. just kept failing all my classes. Yeah. And it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. To the point where I actually got kicked out the program. Wow. And I remember, I, I, I feel with you when you say people who have that empathy. Because people are looking at you like, oh, maybe it's time for you to look at something else. Yeah. But then I had to look back and remember, like, how I, like, I've come so far to where I am now, I know definitely that, you know, basically this was my prayer. Like, God, you can't just leave me here. Nah, you brought me so far to exactly. this point in my life. Yeah. Like, you're really all I have. Yeah. So I, I definitely feel you where, when you said that your willpower can only do so much. Exactly. And it's faith that will, you know, take the rest of it. Yeah. So even push through any obstacle that mm -hmm. you have. Um, I also wanted to ask about, yeah. like, with everything that you've experienced, mm -hmm. like, and also the platform that you've built for yourself. Yeah. How have you been able to handle, like, you know, the negative feedback that you yeah. might have received, both from family mm. or even friends? Yeah. And just all, like, the bad, any, if any, yeah. bad talk that you've ever, yeah. like, gotten from people. You know, definitely. Especially, sorry, especially as you're doing, like, you're pursuing healthcare, which is a professional yeah. field, and you're doing other creative things. Yeah. Cause that's that's not something that people do. Yeah. And it's easy for people to not want to do that just so that they can preserve yeah. their name under yeah. the professional title. Yeah, I think that the challenge with that is when you're doing these things and you're not, you know, living up to the capability of your field, right? Or you doing these things but you're not performing well with your board exams. Then it's like you're not performing well in the, in the main thing. So therefore, people can say you're not serious. If you would have been, if you'd be more serious, I think for me, that's where like anxiety will come in. So therefore, I go super hard with my studies, right? Because it becomes, it, 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 it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, because I know that they're naysayers, then I need to perform crazy. So my grind in that aspect is even crazier. Right, so then it's like it's like I do this, but then I I, I have to work hard because the the fear is like underperforming. So I've been blessed that I perform well on my board exams. I have not, you know, by the grace of God, even have you know what have a fail or anything like that. Um, and I I think the bulk of medicine, the bulk of medicine is in the foundation. The first two year of medical school is the most important. Mm -hmm. Everything else down the field, like. It becomes you can learn that skill, mm. but if you lose the foundation, if you don't study hard enough for the first two years, you, you lose a lot of medicine. Mm. That's when you learn the the root of medicine, mm -hmm. and that would always drive your passion. You understand, moving, moving, moving forward. That's what's been very helpful in that regard. For me, when people are telling me stuff, I've learned and de I've developed ability to not pay attention to that. Right, I've seen a lot of positive deflection in my life when it comes to the things that I've committed myself to. Mm -hmm. To the point now that anybody who has anything to say, they're not living my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Be because I know I'm living this life, and at one time, and at some point, my life is going to expire. I'm going to exhaust every ambition mm -hmm. that God imparts in me. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to do that to fulfill me. If God today tells me, Anthony, drop this whole thing and go do this next thing. 
I'm going to drop this whole thing. Go do the next thing. Because at the end of the day, if you listen and following that, like you're going to be successful. It's everything that is God said is going to be successful. Right? And with that being said, I still have my ears open. I don't block people what they say. I either use that as a fuel. And I, I either use that also to be like, okay, why would they say this? Can I modify this a little better? It might, it might, it might, it might help my presentation. Or it might help my delivery, mm. right? And 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 and, and, and everything everything is purposeful to drive you to your success. Mm. There's a there's a statement there's a saying in the in the book Alchemy, the um the Alchemist, mm. um I by Paul, Paul Paul Paulo Paulo Coelho. Um, what is it? Let me let me let me let me let me let me find the quote. It's like and when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. So that's a powerful, that right there, when you want something, the word something, word something, when you want something, if you want everything in the universe, like if you really put all your energy, like people are not that crazy to go get it. <laughs> you got to be crazy. When I say I'm crazy, I'm that crazy. I'm going to go, I'm going to do everything necessary to get it. Mm. You got to be crazy to send out like a thousand email for that job you want. You gotta be crazy to be be the wait to be waiting earliest in the morning at the door for that CEO when he's walking through. You gotta be that crazy. J Cole said he waited for Jay Z to pull up to give him his CD. Mm. You understand? Like waiting to hand it directly. Like that shows you know you're humble. That shows you're hungry. Dedicated. Dedicated. Discipline. Discipline. Faith. Faith. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you like. Come on, you gotta apply it. It builds character. Like, come on, it builds character. When you realize you went, you went that low to get it. When yeah. you when you get high, it will, you def- that will definitely it keep will, you humble. It, it will, it will. That's what all these things that I hear makes me. Um, and it's gonna happen. You cannot be a performer and not be ready to be booed. Mm. You can't be trying to play in a big stage and not expect that somebody's gonna boo you. But it's funny because I feel like the fear of even getting that rejection stops people from doing what they actually want to yeah. do. Yeah. That's why there's only a few percentage of people who are that great. You can't have... There's not that many Kobe Bryant's or Michael Jordan's. That's true. That's not, a, not a lot of people can can lose their life and the whole world basically shut down like that. Mm. Mm. You know? Mm. When, when, Kobe, when, when, when Kobe passed... Yeah. Basically, the whole world shut down. I, I remember. Even when I went on Twitter, like every single tweet was just like... Yeah. Everyone, like yeah. everyone, yeah. yeah, it was. It's, it's still crazy. Yeah, that was somebody that you know exemplified what it meant to be dedicated yeah. and unique in yeah. their dedication. Yeah, like like sickening grind. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, and you need to have that vi- ferociousness and hunger, mm-hmm. um, especially when things get tough. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. And um. Another thing I want to point out is that because there's some people that's like you know I just want to live a regular yeah like a regular lifestyle I don't want to do anything crazy I don't want to yeah. be famous but I think everything he's talking about is for any of you guys that's that's that you feel like you have something greater in you yeah and you have to understand it just doesn't come out like that without mm. you putting the work in it exactly um, I mean it's what is what. It, it's funny you said that because you know sometimes when I put myself out there, I'm like, man, why can't I live a normal life? Normal, yeah. <laughs> normal, normal life means that normal life means that nobody, I don't do too much. yeah, nobody's peeping into your life. But I gotta be out there. Like, it is what it is. Before you get to the bright lights, you gotta go through things, um, and 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 be willing to wait out. Yeah. So when when your future is bright, you know you're not just gonna wake up and it's bright lights outside. You know there's gonna be seasons where it's gonna be dark clouds. It's gonna rain, um, and sometimes it can rain for some time, and it might seem like it's never gonna stop raining. Um, you never go. It might seem like the lights are not, the sunlight is not coming out, but you have to stay dedicated. It's those periods that make you. So now, whenever you're in the lights, you know, it's like you can tell it how it is. You always have a story to tell. You always have a story to tell. And that's that's how you can build other people up and uplift. Them. And encourage other people. Facts, and, and and that's wonderful at that point because you realize what the whole journey was about. You know, that's what makes it make sense. That was really good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So this was very, very 
it was it was a great talk and I enjoyed I it. I hope you guys really got a lot out of it because yeah. I know I did. Um, I'm gonna put his Instagram name, all your handles underneath for you guys to follow him. Mm-hmm. He does have you do have a page where you um where you make more stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, podcast, right? Yeah. So I I do have a podcast as well. I have a company. I have a lot of pages. Um, <laughs> I have my two Instagram. Well, I have three Instagram pages. Pages. My main page, which is at Doctor Underscore OMMA Underscore MD. Then I have my at Doctor's Messages page, which is where I do a lot of my motivational um, and encouragement stuff. I still do that on my main page. Mm-hmm. Then I have my Ogin and Suya, which is my dance class slash Suya business page and also have a podcast um uh station called pipeline through the gram um, and he still has free time and i have free time <laughs> so a lot a lot of things going on you but know? He's, he's doing it right he he's very disciplined and he set himself you know to have specific habits to make him have this ability to do all this stuff so that's really good Facts. and you guys should follow it even if you're not in yeah, medical follow, school, check it out like, you mm. will learn uh, so much about yeah. just success and faith and just with Holding on through the journey of everything. Yeah. And also, yeah, I do music too. So, you know, I got my second single coming out. My first single was Kai Jewe. Um, I released that last 2019, um, November 2019. Um, and um, my next single was set to release May 1st of this year. So Be on the lookout. So be on the lookout, man. We have things just coming out the woodworks anytime. That's you know? good. That's good. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for watching for sure um, make sure you like comment subscribe stay tuned for more and I'll see you guys at the next video Jeez. also stay safe wash your hands exactly you know it's crazy out we keep a distance even though we're not socially distancing <laughs> I mean, right now it don't count it don't you count today I mean? because because we just you know yeah. it is what it is kai <laughs> See this fine girl, my sunshine, my hard money, she be my long time. I would do anything to make time, take you around the world just to save time. So let's do a recording. Testing, one, two, three. Yeah, so we here today, man, just catching the vibe. You know, God is good, you know, all glory to the most high. We just, we haven't, um, this is just a test run. Yeah, of course. Okay. No, I thought, I thought you were actually starting. No, no, just, just, just talk. Okay. You, this girl.